course, like a lot of people living voters, and I've been moderating forums in my county for over 30 years, I hate to admit, but um, anyway, I'm going to assume that we're all here tonight for the same reason, and that's that we want to be informed and conscientious voters um, for April 9th's election, or before, if I'm already voting, or, or um, mail in. That when we do that, when we do vote, that we're responsible, that our votes are well thought out. So, anyway, welcome to what should be a very informative and interesting evening of political and, and personal and civil exchanges. Um, as I said at the beginning, this was my invitation, so um, if the candidates showed up tonight, we'll see them, and if they did, we won't. But um, a couple things before we begin, if I could, perhaps you can turn off or adjust um, anything that beeps, buzzes, sings, or renders a musical interlude. Um, and then, of course, we're in a small group here, so I don't think I need to worry about any I'm breaking out an applause, but that's somewhat distracting and time consuming, so I thank you for both of those hints. Um, and also, outside the door, I did notice a little bit of, of campaign material um, on the way out. If you want to pick some up, that would be okay. Um, so, let me help everybody understand what's going to happen here tonight. For those of us who are visual learners, and most of us are, by the way, know that the candidates are seated. Um, the ones who are seated and the ones who are absent. This is how they will appear on the ballot. Um, so if you're a visual learner, you can sort of take stock of, of where people are sitting and who they are. We're going to start with each candidate getting two minutes to make an opening statement. Uh, and candidates, wherever you are, I need to point out over here a couple of, oh here, a couple timekeepers, Roseanne and Kathy. Um, they've got cards here. If um, for your opening statements, you get the two minutes for responding to questions, you get one minute. So the opening statement, uh, if you see um, a green card, you know you're halfway through your opening statement. You'll only, well, I'm sorry, it's yellow. 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 Right. Yellow, okay. And yellow for your answering questions uh, will tell you that you've got five seconds left. 15, oh, 15. So one minute, 15, and stop. Okay, and obviously then the red is stop. So um, if you see the yellow card, 15 seconds, you know you've got, normally I only get five, so you've got a longer time to think on your feet tonight. Um, so the 15 seconds means start to wrap up your thought or your sentence, and obviously the, the red card means please do stop. After the opening um, statements from our candidates, we're going to launch into some questions, um, which are on the cards, which if you want to get, hand out the cards, hey, um, Adrian? Allison, Allison. Allison, they're going to be about me with some cards here. Just hold them up, and Allison will come along and pick them up. If you any time, just break into, okay. Um, or she'll give you some more cards. Okay. And we'll ask as many questions as we have time for. Unfortunately, we need to jiggle the room around a few times so we hear from um, all the candidates that are here tonight. So my job as moderator is simple. It's to facilitate an open, interesting, respectful evening. And of course, it's with all public forums, and I say this all the time, it doesn't make any difference if we're rolling the way at home, all decisions of the moderator are final. So, okay, so tonight we're going to hear from the candidates who seek eight seats. There are eight seats open within, within the Avon Township governmental structure. Avon Township, so... No, no, eight seats total. Oh, oh, there are eight seats so total. Oh, oh, when you go to vote, sorry. eight <laughs> seats are what you're going to vote for, even though I think there are 19 candidates. So, Avon Township serves over 65,000 residents within the borders Looks of like Avon four. Township. Here are all the parts of villages of Grays Lake, Round Lake, Round Lake Beach, Round Lake Heights, Round Lake Park, Haynesville, Third Lake, and <coughs> areas um, that surround these communities or around them. And all of the officials of Avon Township are elected every four years. There's complete turnover of, of the government every four years in the townships. Um, Registered voters will elect a township supervisor, an assessor, a highway commissioner, a township clerk, and four trustees. And those are the candidates who are invited to come tonight. 
Um, as I said before, there are 19 candidates who are determined to fill the above offices. An elected office holder can be praised or criticized for their public involvement. They're likely to be confronted, questioned, challenged, and exhausted by the job. But nonetheless, these perhaps brave and determined office seekers come before us tonight anxious to enter or re-enter the public arena. And that's why we're here, to responsibly cast votes for eight of them. So our first group of office seekers will be running for the position of township trustee. Trustees serve a four-year term, so the persons voted in this in April will serve as well all the, except for assessor. I'll tell you more about that. I mean, my, yes, assessor. Um, they'll serve until May of 2017. So your vote is going to take them a long time, four years, you're going to have to live. So you need to be, to be thinking responsibly here. Um, trustees' responsibilities include the monthly auditing of bills, approving and adopting the town fund budget, the road district budget, and any contracts necessary for the operation of the township. So I've got the privilege right now of introducing the candidates this evening, those who want one of those four trustee seats. So candidates, within your opening statements, I'd hope that you'd introduce ourselves, yourselves to us. Tell us your qualifications, the top priorities you might focus on for the next four years. We truly are sitting here tonight wanting to get to know you better. So let me see who we've got sitting in our midst. The first one, Kathy, is that you? Yes, it is. And I apologize that I don't know everybody by face, but our first candidate is um, Ms. Kathy DeGroo. Uh, so Kathy, if you'd have an opening statement, Please. Sure, thank you. Can you hear me? Good. Uh, for 23 years, I lived in, I lived in unincorporated Grace Lake, so I have first-hand knowledge of township issues and services. I have a background in retail management. When my children entered school, I began volunteering. I worked with PTO, book fair, scouts, athletics. I used my business skills to help these groups grow. My husband and I successfully ran a banquet hall. I became an expert event planner. I branched out to work with Save a Pet, the Food Pantry, Friends of the Library, and Chamber of Congress. I learned to link resources to get better results. I was elected to the Grace Lake Library Board twice, and the number one thing I have learned is that a strong organization must be people-centered. I will make a difference by turning the township focus away from politics to a focus on community needs. Number one, township must reach out and explain the purpose of township to our citizens. Newsletters, websites, and signage can be used to get this message out. Number two, township must engage people and ask about their concerns. What do people need from township? We can use surveys, focus groups, and special events to foster this conversation. Number three, township must respond to the needs expressed by our residents. Using this community feedback, we can focus our resources and make township relevant. As township moves forward, it must be financially sound. Budgets must balance, wasteful spending must be eliminated, and services must be reevaluated. We must work smarter with less money. I will listen and respond to your township concerns. I am the right candidate with the right skills. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Next we have Ms. Jeannie Kirby. And Jeannie, if you wouldn't mind, an opening statement, please. My name is Jeannie Kirby, and I'm running for trustee of Avon Township on the Avon Strong slate. I'm married, and I have four adult male children and two male grandchildren. And I'm happy to say, for the first time, I am living with another female, my kitten Reese. I'm really excited about that. I am a retired educator, serving for 20 years as a teacher with Round Lake Area Schools, and served as an administrator for Harvard School District, Zion School District, and Waukegan Public Schools. As an administrator, I have served as a principal, curriculum coordinator, a uh, director for um, leadership and district initiatives and executive director for academic affairs. 
as um, an administrator and during my career, it has given me opportunities to build budgets using local, state, and federal funding sources, as well as write, manage, and account for private and public grants worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. What I bring to township government is a deep commitment to service and personal integrity and a tenacious passion. I am relentless about financial oversight of taxpayers' money and helping our communities be second to none. The strength of township government lies in its ability to coordinate and orchestrate all public services within the township. The strength of the services within our township is the ability to work together to solve big problems under very financially struggling times. I have seen this work time and time again. In public education, we are relentless about building services in order to meet the needs of students and our, their families. You only have to ask your neighbors to see the disconnect between citizens and the role of student government. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Next, we'll hear from Olivia McNeil. Lillian, open his statement, please. Yes, good evening. I want to thank everybody for showing up here tonight. I think it's uh, it's good to see people involved in the township government and all forms of government. Um, I'm a resident of Avon Township since uh, I was born. Uh, the family farm, I farm, and the family farm has been in existence since uh, 1908. So uh, we've been, as far as me and the family, we've been here involved in the township uh, since that time, over 100 years. Um, currently, um, I'm, I'm the incumbent trustee on the township board. I've got probably 14 years. I was first appointed in 1999 uh, and lost an election once and then been reappointed in one elections and stuff like that. So I've been involved in township government for quite a bit. Also, I managed the Avon Cemetery uh, since 1989. I've been managing that cemetery for a long time. So I know how to manage people. I know how to work with people with between township government and, 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 and the fortunate uh, the cemetery. Um, been involved uh, with uh, with the food pantry also by donating food and, and services to the food pantry also. Um, so I, I hope to bring it on more for township. I need to we need to expand township, get it open more, more newsletters, more uh, a lot of things. I, I watch that sign and nothing's ever been put on there about meeting and stuff like that. Uh, I get frustrated and frustrated for four years. So I'm with a great group of people with the Zayvon Strong group. And uh, I think if you vote for Avon Strong people, we'll get Avon Township back together again. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And finally, Mr. House. Uh, Good evening. Thank you. Um, I, I've been a resident of Avon Township um, a whole lot less than Bill. But I've been I'm married for 28 years. I'm a beautiful woman. Uh, grew up in Grace Lake. Three kids, all in college, uh, a couple uh, in graduate school. Uh, I'm very proud of them, and the reason I probably haven't been involved in force is because I've been spending my time raising my family. Now that I'm an empty nester, I found some time to, to get involved with the community and my little corner of the world, which is Avon Township. Um, I I'm involved for for the youth of Avon Township. I believe that the youth need to get registered to vote. At 18, they need to get involved with the community right away and because when they are involved and active, they will vote. And the more that pe the more people who vote, the better the elected officials are. And I, I mean, that's that is a deep core belief for me. And as for the uh, the services of Avon Township, there's there's they provide for the elderly and the needy. <coughs> and the township is still relevant today as it was when it was created over 100 years ago. I want those services to be kept. I want them to be enhanced through, not through raising any taxes, but talking to corporations and foundations getting some grant money. Um, I also want to share one quick story about the service. There, there's a bus service that the township offers. A couple weekends ago, I knocked on the door. The, the husband was on, was in a wheelchair, and did not even know about the, the, the bus service which was a shame, he'd been in the wheelchair for, for 11 years. I, I was with uh, my running mate, uh, Steve Hall. We, we found out, we got him the information, and 
I didn't care if that person voted for me or not. I did some good, and I, I hope to do that for all the people of Avon Township. Thank you, Hal. Okay, those were the opening statements. Now we're going to move into some of the questions I've received up here. Um, and we'll rotate. Um, we'll start with you, Kathy, and then we'll start with you, and then, you know, so we'll rotate around a little bit. As public servants, an important job is showing up to represent the citizens. I want to thank you all for showing up. How will you make sure you are available to serve as elected? And what reasons do you think are acceptable to miss the once a month township meetings? So Kathy, we'll start with you if you don't mind. As a trustee at the township, I would make township my number one priority. I do serve on other boards. I'm president of friends. Right now they're having their quarterly meeting and I am here. I think this is a very good example of myself and my teammates. We're here and we plan to always be here for the people of the township. Thank you. Okay, thanks Kathy. JD, please. I think that it's short of an emerg family emergency, there is nothing that I can think of. It, 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 once you're elected by the people, you have an obligation <coughs> to represent their concerns at every meeting. To be absent is a form of fraud for me. You have to be there and you have to be up and, and involved in every decision that comes along. Thanks, Jeannie. Bill, please. Well, as we've been around for as long as I have, uh, I think I could count on one hand how many meetings I've missed. Um, I usually go every meeting. I always go in to look at the bills, the paid bills. That's part of the trustee's job. Uh, every month I go in and review the bills. Uh, <clears throat> I will admit, maybe once in a while, I do miss, but it probably counts in on one hand, too. Um, so, yeah, I believe in township government, always have, and uh, you won't see me absent very often. If, I, if I'm either sick or once a year we, I do get away and that has been scarce too lately, so I'm very seldom to me. Thanks, Bill. How please? Um, I have to agree. There's there's very little that would be uh, a reason to miss. Obviously, a family emergency. Uh, I have a communicable disease. I got the flu. I don't want to pass the law. <laughs> That's exactly. Right. But short of that, um, you know, once you can schedule vacations around the schedule of the township meetings. Thanks, Alan. Next question, please. In the past four years, the township has settled a $450 million lawsuit. Thousand? Too many zeros. $450,000 lawsuit spent close to, is it 100000 on legal fees and still has more litigation in court. What accounts for the legal problems of the past and in the future? Jeannie, please. Um, I think one of the things that is in for that is my piece about integrity. There are some things that you need to ask yourself. It, it, is this, this act that I'm doing, this goal, or what I'm doing, is, does it measure against my heart and being and having integrity within myself? And I'm not so sure everyone has always asked that question. The uh, accounting of that money is not just the taxpayers within this township. Because we belong to a group that represents all the townships, but every resident within that group pays that bill, not just the people that did not perform the, um, was a firing, did not fire it appropriately. It's every taxpayer. So I think with that, being honest, truthful, and having integrity are key components to making good decisions. Thanks, Jeannie. Bill, please. Did you answer the same question? Uh, All I got to say, it's been a long four years. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we got the lawsuit, um, and that was not part of my problem because well, I inherited the problem, I guess. But uh, yeah, we have to look at the integrity of the group. Um, <clears throat> they meant well, I suppose. I guess I'm going to preach a little bit. Yeah, maybe they meant well, but you, you got to work with people. And what they did was wrong. Uh, and obviously it was wrong. I can't believe the settlement to this day that settlement the way it was. But that's the way it was. And, and it did affect the township. So I think what the group of people I'm running with, that's why I'm not running with them, um, is we got integrity people. And that's what you need in government. I don't care if it's a village or 
whatever government you're in, library boards, you gotta be integrity acts. And you, you gotta stand up what's right and, and do what's right and things will turn out right. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Al, oh, please. Uh, I would have to agree with you know, most of what they said. The integrity portion, really, if a person doesn't have their integrity, it's, it, I don't know how they can look at themselves in the mirror every morning. Um, and it, it, part of integrity is voicing and I'm sure that members of the current board have expressed, certain members of the board have expressed to the, to the people who were causing these bad, have making these bad decisions, their concerns with, with those decisions. And uh, I would expect myself and the rest of the board to be the same in, in any kind of future uh, decisions that would come up. Thanks. Kathy, please. In my nine years on the library board, um, legal issues came up. And so I have experience working with lawyers but, um, and seeking their advice. You need legal advice. But at the township, I do not think we need uh, an attorney who sits right next to the rest of the board members, who uh, is now like a part of the board. Um, we attend meetings, and many things can be decided unless someone that the attorney uh, advises them. Um, it's a screen, it's a, another layer to government that I hope we can get away from. Now there is upcoming litigation, which Supervisor Rush did bring up. There's more litigation coming. So um, she cannot, she did not reveal in another form what the nature of that is, but I would like to share that with you too, that this is not over. Thank you, Kim. Next question, please. Um, part of it is addressed to new um, members as opposed to incumbents, but I think I'm just going to open it up to everybody since there are only four are here. Um, what are the key differences you want to make in Avon Township government as a newcomer to the board? And then combined with that is what new ways of communication would you use to connect with the citizens of the township? So sort of what do you intend to do in order to be present and out there connecting with people? Um, so let's see, we'll start here with Bill, please. Even though you're an incumbent Bill, I'm sure you can find some other way of answering this one. Oh, there's always ways to answer that question. I would, for kind of on the earth, I'd like to put out a newsletter. Uh, our past highway commissioner put out a newsletter, I think, once, once a quarter week, maybe twice a year, I can't remember, but at least he put out a newsletter. Um, I'd like to see Ivan Township do that. Uh, we've yet to put out a newsletter. I think we might have put out one, I guess. Um, but I'd like to see at least a quarterly newsletter go out to the township residents uh, and put a little more. We've got a website. I would use that totally a lot more. And we have this sign that they put up on our property, I would use that more as an information booth to, uh, with an Ainsville, with, with, we got, I think there's seven villages, I think. So um, every village has got something going on, our district's got things going on. So that's what I would do. I would get out and try to communicate. Communication that is the key. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. How, please? As I said in my opening statement, I have a very strong passion for the youth of, uh, of the community. And I would like to reach out to the high schools to enhance um, voter registration programs at the high schools on a regular basis. There's three high schools, the two Grace Lake and Robert Lake High Schools, get in there uh, all lunchtime and, and sign up the kids who will be eligible to vote. That would be one way. Uh, and, and Bill really kind of stole my, some of my words. That sign that sits out on Washington Street is so underutilized where there's, there could be festivals and, and the services that the township provides. And people drive by that a lot and, and you get the, the website of, of the township. So uh, those would be the two, the two ways that I would, I would begin with to try to enhance communication with the community. Thanks, Al. Kathy, please. Um, communication is, the, is what holds us all together. And it's the newsletter, it's the signage, it's the website, it's reaching out to other organizations, sharing information together, um, partnering with the idea of newsletters. I had mentioned, put a survey in and ask people. Ask people 
what within the parameters of township, what they need from us. They're, this two-way dialogue isn't happening, and I want to bring it back. Um, some other things we we've talked about, um, focus groups, special events. Um, <coughs> Facebook is nice, but I would. We had a meeting on Monday, and the meeting could have been on that sign. No one, you know, I was knocking on doors on Monday, and people didn't even know the, the township meeting was. So that sign could be used completely differently. Thanks, Kathy. And Jeannie, please. I think one of the things that I'd like to look at is is the policies and procedures that the township has in place. Right now, we have a lot of procedures that are township originated on how often someone can come to the food bank, how often they can get support. Those need to be reviewed and analyzed based on the needs of our community. I also believe very strongly in community input, and of course, Avon Strong is very united in how they see that. But we need to have some standing committees, and I'd like to see an advisory committee for senior citizens and an advisory for committees for high school. I agree with you. I think getting high schools involved in local government is a key to help building good citizens. And if we can't do that, if we can't build good citizens by having them be involved in our community, we're missing something. So advisory committees, which doesn't cost a, a penny, doesn't cost one red cent. It just costs my time, and I'm devoted to committed and committed to that time. Thanks, Jamie. Next question, how would be the first to answer? I understand that a new position was created with the title of office administrator for pay around $45,000 yearly. Why can't the supervisor or and or clerk do this job? I'm not very well prepared to answer that. Um, there's, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I have no answer for that, to be honest. I mean, if I could try to plot my way through, but that would be wrong. I, I really don't know. That's a fair response. Um, Kathy, do you have a response? Could you repeat the question? Sure. It, it involves a creation of a new office um, position, I guess, um, office administrator with pay about 45000 a year. I'm wondering why the supervisor and or clerk couldn't do that job. Uh, when I, I found out that there was an office administrator, I, I was puzzled because there's talk that salaries were cut, okay, but now all, so here's the salary cuts, look over here, and then we don't know, it's not advertised as a position, that person's name isn't on the door, and then somebody else was hired. Um, I'm not crazy about the idea. Um, I think we need a supervisor who will do the job and hopefully save the people the money of that salary. Thanks, Kathy. Jamie, please. Um, this is an area where the trustees actually vote on the budget. That's their job. And so they either decide to have this position or they don't. To me, it's a lie to the taxpayers. The taxpayers pay, according to statute, a supervisor. It is paid as if it is a full-time job. It deserves to be a full-time job. It should be a full-time job. And with that, if they're doing their full-time job, they don't need an office manager. In defense of the office administrator, I happen to like him, and I've been in the office several times, and most of the time, he's the only one that can answer a question. So I'm torn because he's doing a good job. But the fact is, if that was put into place, because the supervisor was never in the office. And that was wrong. It's a lie to the taxpayers, and it's not a wise use of taxpayer money. I would vote and, and actively pursue eliminating that position or having the township supervisor pay for that position out of their own. There you go. Thank you, Jenny. And Bill, please. That is a pretty good question. Um, administrator, yeah, it's probably a little over title, but he likes titles. Um, I look at him as a, as a, a bookkeeper, and, and, and Jeannie is right. He probably, I've never had a trouble with the guy. I mean, he's very, he knows his stuff, he gets something. But yeah, the supervisor probably should be there a little more often than they are. Um, 
whether we need a full, uh, we, he does take care of the books and does a good job taking care of the book work. So maybe we need like a, and when we, four years ago, we had a part-time bookkeeper. We shared it with the highway department and we had a, a part-time bookkeeper take care of the books and the supervisor did the work and maybe a couple of secretaries or a couple of secretaries. So, yeah, we could probably easily, uh, if the supervisor does his job, his or her job, uh, would be there to do the everyday work and then maybe have a part-time bookkeeper to make sure everything gets done. Because it it's a big job. So, um, but it very well be looked at. I'd like to look at it myself in the next four years if we get it. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. A final question, unless there are more out there. Does anyone have another question for the trustees? Okay. Township donates tens of thousands of dollars to non to non-township groups. Who decides where this money goes, how it is accounted for, how can citizens see where this money is spent? Can citizens weigh in on the process? Kathy, I think we'll start with you again. This process I've been a witness to at the last couple of meetings at the township. I cannot tell you exactly where the system came from or how it's accounted for. What it is, is the township donates to outside organizations. They, and that's what they do and um, they vote on it. And I think that there needs to be accountability. There, have, there needs to be a system if we structure, if we talk to, if we come up with priorities for the township through a strategic plan and say these are the areas township is devoted to, say it's senior citizens, maybe it's domestic violence, youth programs, and that's how they want that, that particular part of the budget spent, then that's how I think it should be done. I think it should be done in a in a, an accountable way. Thanks, Kathy. Jeannie, please. I don't know who gave the question, but I could just hug you because this is something that's really near and dear to my heart. I took, again, I think it is smoke and mirrors and, and, and a, a lie to the taxpayers. They use it to say that this is not duplicating services. But as a steward of taxpayer money, my job is to make sure that every cent that is paid by the taxpayer is spent in a legitimate manner. To give money to another organization without involvement and oversight is not legitimate in my mind. It may be a wonderful place. In fact, I, they've donated $200 to Hometown Heroes. It's a wonderful program. But they didn't even ask them for the money. They just got a check. But we need to analyze every way that we spend money. We need to have rules and regulations on how we do that. But mostly it's about partnerships and involvement. If I'm going to give money to an organization because they're promoting the work of the township, then I want, oh, I want to be involved in that decision making and, uh, and oversee that financial obligation. Thank you, Jeannie. And go please. They brought up very good points. Um, Four years we were supposed to have a policy on because uh, it is, it's all over the board. We'll give two hundred dollars here, a thousand dollars there, it's all over the board. And I go, I thought we were gonna have a policy for you every next meeting. Next meeting. Um, we need a policy. I mean there's a lot of good groups we do give money to, uh like CASA and a few other things I can't think off the top of my head I'm gonna give away. And there's groups out there I can kind of scratch my head. But uh, and it brings back the old attitude of okay, it's the people's mind, maybe the mayor over here doesn't like this program. Why, why should we give our taxpayers money away? You know, and I imagine the villages are struck with that same problem, too. You're working with taxpayers' money and you're giving it out to groups, so you better make sure there are legitimate groups and, and you are working with these groups, like Jeannie was saying. we got to be involved with these groups. So, and we should have a policy. I don't know if the mayor the villages have policies, but Avon Township has yet to have a policy to say this is our cap. And, and that's why, that's what I'm going to strive to get if I'd like to know four years. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Al, please. I think this money, going to the, the accountability of the taxpayers, that is the key issue. And any money that gets donated, it almost should be they're writing and applying to us for a grant for, for their needs, what they're going to use the money for, 
how it will benefit, how some benefit comes back to the township and the township taxpayers. Um, so a, po a policy that, that's very clear and, and very open so that people can know about it and, and, and apply it <coughs> and have, it, uh, have the, their applications acted upon in a timely manner. Thank you, Tom. Okay, I've got one more question here. Um, so, did everyone answer that last question? I think so. Um, this has to do with lowering taxes um, in the township and comments on the fact that taxes have gone down over 20% in the last four years. And, and they're asking about how will you lower taxes. This is um, an interesting question. Um, anyway, um, Jeannie, I guess we'll start with you again. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what they're trying to get at. The taxes are, taxes are set by levy. And in order to set the levy, you have to have a clear understanding of what that money is paid for. Part of the problem is their deficit spending in some funds and not in others because there doesn't seem to be rhyme or reason to why they take money out of some funds and not from others. Um, we reviewed their budgets over the last four years and um, as a person who lives and dies by budgets in my profession, profession, I was perplexed and confused. And I don't often admit that I'm confused about money. So what I think we need to do before we talk about lowering levies or changing levies is to actually get the budgets in line, to look at what we spend it at, make sure we are cleanly accounting for every single cent that is there, and then if we do not need the money, then we need to change the levy. But I don't think right now we could tell if they need the money or not need the money because they, it's willy-nilly, and I wish our opponents were here to address this, but we can't tell why they're spending money out of certain parts of the Thank you, Jimmy Bell, please. Yeah, we need to, we need to lower, I, I'm still not quite clear on the question, but I'll just wing it here, I guess. But uh, it, they've lowered a levy, which is great. Uh, I've been on a board for a long time, and the uh, previous administration lowered a levy, and pretty soon you don't have any money, and you're scrambling. And then you'll be like a state of Illinois, you're deficit spending. And last year, the Avon Township deficit spent. Uh, there's no question about it, over $100,000. So they're, they're going to spend, we're lucky we have a, a bank. So there is money in there. So we're not, Avon Township is far from being broke, so don't worry about that. Uh, because we were very frugal years ago. Uh, so there is, there's money there. So they're able to cut the levy. It's easy to cut levies when you have money. So it's not wrong to cut levies. It gets things in balance. But you really got to watch what you do because if you don't, if you don't get that, you get your levy down low and then the multipliers are not there. Taxes are so I still get it. I understand the taxes. Thank God we got an assessor. So, but thank you. Thanks. Well, okay, Hal. Before you just randomly lower taxes, uh, the money that you have has to be accounted for properly. Um, Kathy referred to it, and, and I think the first question that there are more lawsuits pending. Uh, you're going to start lowering taxes, and then there's going to be some, some liability. Uh, legal liability that the township owes, that, that would not be fiscally responsible. That would create even a further deficit. <coughs> before you lower taxes, and if, of course everyone would love lower taxes, but before you can lower taxes any further, you have to make sure that the, the current funds are properly accounted for and that all the needs of the township are met in a proper and accurate manner. Thanks, Kathy, please. I'd like to take this question from the uh, the other side of the coin, my tax bill. Um, my husband and I looked at our tax bill and we figured out if your uh, real estate tax bill was $10,000, the township last year saved you $4. So what I'm saying to you is 20% look at your tax bill and figure out what that means to you. Um, four dollars is four dollars. I guess I can go out and have a nice coffee. Um, but um, percentages and actual in your pocket money can be two different things. That's it. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, that's the end of our questions. Um, so if you wouldn't mind uh, a couple minutes, a couple moments maybe.
we're going to ask the candidates here maybe to take a seat in the front seat and ask the um, supervisor candidates, um, in this case a candidate, if they would um, come up. Oops. I'm sorry. Beth.
So the Federal grant, I think, runs out in about two years, and then it has to be self-sustaining. So that's where, with the trustees and myself and the community, we can partner and say, what should the bus service be? What services should be uh, uh, delivered? And what's the time frame? Because right now the biggest complaint is that it ends at 2 o'clock and it's really available till 6 p.m., but why do we do that? So I think that, again, with the other group, uh, uh, voice, I agree with them, that it has to be partnerships and ask the villages, what do you do as far as the service and amenities for your senior residents? And then we can take it from there. Okay, Dad. Another question. The APOP Community Foundation, a 501c3 entity, runs the APOP Food Pantry. It is a separate and distinct organization from the APOP Township Government. There has been some talk about placing either the Food Pantry itself or the Foundation under the direct control of the Township Government. If you were elected, what is your position and plan for this relationship and why? Currently, the Avon Township Food Pantry is considered a food pantry of, of last resort. It's an emergency food pantry. So in order to keep that designation and receive up to 10,000 pounds of free food a month, it has to be run by a 501c3, which is the Avon Township uh, Community Foundation. Um, I would continue that, and actually, that would be the way that we could also do grant writing and uh, fund some youth services, senior services, services for the unemployed. Those things have to be partnered with the 501c3, and we do have it, but we only utilize it for the food pantry, but their charter is broad enough that we could do it for fundraising and grant writing, which is a huge thing that uh, we're going to do to bring in new services, but leave property taxes flat for the next four years. Okay, Dennis, another question, please. How would you maximize the tax dollars that they found townships township receives? Great question. I think that the township has been, there, there hasn't been a vision there what the township can be, and most of the conversations I've had door to door with residents has been in correlation to that. My feeling is that the township really is here to provide certain amenities to the seven municipalities that will enhance actually property values, for example. Uh, if we have good senior services, if we have good youth services, if we have services for the unemployed so they, they can become employed again, then we're actually building up, in my estimate, uh, property values because no one wants to purchase a home where there's high unemployment. Um, youth programs are important to people, and seniors, if they're retiring in our communities, I'd rather they stay here than move away because they can't afford the property taxes. So anything that the township can do to possibly increase property values, which the assessor can attest to this, the reason that our tax rates are so high because they're inversely proportional is market values go down, tax rates shoot up. As soon as market values start going up, you'll see a drop in, in, uh, in tax rates. But we need amenities that'll do that and raise market values. Okay. Um, Doug, why have you filed two homestead, I'm assuming they mean exemptions, for Hanesville and Chicago? Yeah. Uh, and, and I do apologize for that. And if, if everybody sitting in this room can uh, attest to, once you file for them, you get them renewed every year, and it's kind of by design, out of mind. Uh, we owned a property in, in Chicago since 1996, so it's just something that kept rolling over. You don't apply for it every year, it just rolls over, I'm accountable for it. it. It was just like, well, you never think about it because it just renews. So we're working with the Cook County Assessor to pay any late fees or penalties because I am accountable and it's just something that never came to mind when we moved out here because it just rolls over as it does with everybody. And you don't apply for it annually, it's just, it, it, it's given to you. So I am accountable and I do apologize, but it certainly wasn't done uh, with malice. Okay, another question please, sir. What are your top three priorities for Avon Township with elected supervisor? Partnerships, 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 because we have three years of reserves, for example. Should it be us, the only ones that come up with the priorities of how to spend that down? I, I think that the municipalities, one of the biggest things we've heard from the business community, for example, is if you could help us market the existing commercial um, base that we have, like in downtown Grays Lake, downtown Run Lake Park, downtown Run Lake, that's something that I could do as a full-time supervisor. I mean, I do cold calls now to get customers for an insurance market, which I can certainly do it to bring businesses to the area. The other part is that bringing in new businesses also will lower the tax rates because you're sharing the property taxes also with businesses. So right now, we need more business, businesses to absorb more of the property taxes. Um, so that's a huge part. And the other part is really writing grants for youth programs, senior programs, and for the unemployed. 
uh, for youth program. We have a gang activity in the Ronald area. Minimal, but it's still enough to, to hurt property values and people's perception of the area. We need, uh, I'm a big 4-H guy. Why not have 4-H? Why not have youth community farms and so forth? It's just we need to keep our youth busy during the summertime. And last question, please. What is your overall evaluation of the services the township currently produces, provides, I'm sorry, and their effectiveness? Not very much. Uh, you know, I, I'm one of those people that rather ask for forgiveness than permission. I think that we have the ability to provide more services than we have. They certainly can't be based on property taxes. But writing grants for, you know, like we mentioned, youth services, um, seniors. My mom lives with me. We're always looking for some way to really bring more services to her. There's corporations and foundations that will fund those type of services. Um, the unemployed, for example, that come to the food pantry, how do we impact that number to lower it? Well, what does it cost to have a quarterly job fairs that we could bring them? Bring your resume, hopefully we'll link you with an employer one of those quarters. The other part is if you need workforce development, let's refer you to the county or to nonprofits. But those are the type of things that we don't provide right now, and they certainly can't be based on property taxes, but there's enough grant money for corporations and foundations that as a full-time supervisor, I would certainly write grants and help uh, interns that could come in and help me write those grants. But right now, we're just, we're, we're focused on not being competitive, and we do nothing for the commercial area. I could be marketing our commercial area as a full-time supervisor and bringing in new businesses in partnership with the mayors. And just when you think you finished, there's one more thing to do. No so, um, <laughs> is there anything that can be done with Lake County Trans Project at the same time as the Washington Street Road Widening Project, Highland Lake, sub especially? And I hope you understand that question. No, can you read it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it has to do with questioning what can be done with the Lake County Trans, is a transit project at the same time? the Washington Street Road Widening Project, um, and then mentions Highland Lake sub, especially. You know, I don't mind answering your question, I just don't get the full, uh, are, are we referring to the senior, the, 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 the pace bus? You know, the one thing that I can tell you is that I won't, uh, you know, won't answer things just to give you an answer, and I don't have an answer for that one because it's a county issue, so I really don't have a good answer for it. Okay. Well, we'll just lay that aside then, and we thank you very much. Um, that was a long string of questions, and we appreciate your responsiveness. So, next we're going to move on to the assessor's uh, position here, um, and uh, we have... Um, one person here, um, so we'll hear what they have to say. As you know, the, the township assessor is your liaison <coughs> to the chief county assessment office, and they provide professional help on your real estate assessments and exemptions. Any that are available for homeowners in Lake County, there are two people running for this seat. Um, and contrary to what I said about the voted in new office holders taking their seats on May 20th of this year, the assessor's term runs from January 1st, in this case of 2014, until December 31st of 2017. It's still about a four-year term, but this is according to state law. So anyway, and I'm sure you know this, um, those running for the assessor. So tonight we have Wayne George Flaherty. Um, and Wayne, if you've got an opening statement, we'd sure like to hear it. Yes, hello, I'm Wayne George Flaherty. Uh, Actually, I go by my middle name, George. It's been that way forever. Uh, I'm with the Armstrong team. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of uh, Grays Lake. My family's lived in different municipalities uh, in Avon Township for over 100 years. Uh, I'm a single father with full custody of two children. Uh, I have a daughter who attends uh, the University of Illinois and a son who is uh, looking forward to graduating eighth grade. Getting in high school. Uh, I have a volunteer coach was at Grayslake Park District for 11 years. I uh, coached everything from flag football to basketball to my favorite sport ball. Uh, I'm committed to the challenge of bringing the Avon Township Assessor's Office to the standards and expectations that the taxpayers desire and deserve. 
How do we do this by creating fair, equitable, and accountable assessed values using sound appraisal principles on all properties in the township? The improvements to the assessor's office would benefit both taxpayers and the taxing bodies. <coughs> My goals for the assessor's office are to improve public relations, uh, financial control, uh, and making sure that I have well-trained personnel. Uh, I will take a hands-on approach to this job, being involved in the day-to-day -day operations. I look forward to the challenges of being the assessor, the added responsibilities, the advancement of my career, and becoming a public servant. Amen Township and the taxpayers deserve a full-time, qualified assessor committed to the job, and I am that person. Okay. Thanks, George. I've got some questions for you. Um, could you explain what experiences and training you have to be an assessor for the township? I've actually been a deputy assessor with Lakeville Township uh, since uh, 2008. I got my certifications and qualifications in 2009. Uh, and uh, there's, there's, there's nothing more, especially uh, in job like the, the assessor is such a unique position. Uh, there's nothing more than actual hands-on working in the working in the field, so to speak. Uh, I know that previous jobs I've held were nothing like working in the assessor's office. Uh, but uh, it, it's actually kind of a funny story because I was not full-time employee of the assessor's office when I was first offered uh, to work there. Um, but I actually decided uh, when, when a slot opened up for a full-time position um, and it was offered to me, I actually decided to take it full-time because I enjoyed working in the office and I liked, I liked working in the Okay, thanks. George, another question if you would please. If the assessor lowers my property values, do my taxes go down? No. <laughs> That's it. There's a relationship between your property tax bill and your property assessment that a lot of people don't understand. Um, the assessor's office is not responsible for the amount of your tax bill in regards to the actual dollar amount. Uh, you know, we, we, we touched on earlier about uh, other entities you know, using their taxing dollars. You know, there's, there's schools, police departments, fire departments, park districts. Uh, and, and the township, uh, there's libraries, there's all kinds of stuff that use your tax dollars. If you look at your tax bill and, and you look at, look at the breakdown of, of where your taxing dollars actually go, each one of those taxing bodies is responsible for a portion of your tax bill. So the, the township and the assessor's office in particular doesn't drive the amount of your tax bill. We only set values on your property. It is the value of your property that determines your portion of the tax burden for all of the tax bodies which within you live. Okay, thanks, George. Another question, please. Um, and I'm assuming because you've come around the assessor's office that you might be able to answer an incumbent's question, so I'm going to, to um, ask it of you. How many appeals has the township received in the last four years? How many have resulted in a lower assessment? And what is the time frame for a response to the homeowner? Do you feel qualified to answer these? Uh, portions of it, not all. Okay, yeah, you do what you can. I um, was well, really directed to the incumbent, but I'm curious to know what you know about this. I know that in 2012, Avon Township had in the, in the neighborhood of 4,100 appeals. 2,100 of them were new appeals filed the Board of Review in Waukegan. Um, I don't know the outcome of all of them. Um, I do know that uh, there was in the neighborhood of, well, I was just looking at this stuff a couple weeks ago because we were preparing our township to uh, do other ones. Um, I want to say there was uh, 
you know what I really want to be misstated, but uh, there, was a, there was a considerable drop. I, I also know that uh, Incon Township had the biggest drop in the set value on wall functions. Thanks. Appreciate your thoughts on that. Can I embellish on that a bit? Because it does impact property value, what we were talking about earlier. Okay, let me finish with this question, George. I mean, um, Ron, Donald, and Rob. Douglas. Douglas. That's your name. Um, I need to let him sure. answer all the questions. Um, and this, um, George, it really has to do with what you regard as being your three top priorities and, uh, and, and really an evaluation of the services that are now being offered. I, you know, my three top priorities would be improve public relations. Um, to serve the taxpayers by treating each person with courtesy and respect by offering more and improved services, by improving assessments and account accountability, by making data available through the internet and uh, in-office research, and by improving communications through publications and meetings. Um, <coughs> By appraisals. And what I mean by appraisals, creating fair and equitable assessments based on sound appraisal practices and that support evaluations through improved documentation. Uh, you know, I'll evaluate the current property records to ensure that the information that we're using to create the evaluations are up to date. Personnel. I will train and educate the staff to be professional appraisers and effective public relation uh, skills with, with uh, effective public relation skills. That's something that we've, we've strived for in, in, in the office that I'm working <coughs> now, is just that. Uh, it, is, it is treating everybody uh, equally, spending time with each one, making sure they understand the information that we're telling them. Under, you know, nobody is going to like all the answers you give them. But I can't tell you how many times in the, in the time I've been in the assessor's office, personally, where I've been told, well, I don't like it, but I understand it. And thank you for taking the time to make sure I understand it. Okay, um, one last question. Um, what do you feel about only an attorney representing um, a tax appeal? Well, it actually, not only attorneys can represent taxpayers, so that's that's not a complete accurate statement uh, or, or question. Um, there, there is there is talks about uh, not allowing tax reps uh, to file an appeal on behalf of a taxpayer or homeowner, um, and that only attorneys are allowed to do it. But I both, and beyond that, the homeowner always has the right to appeal their assessment and go to the board hearings and be part of it. So it's not just the homeowner having to hire an attorney to appeal their taxes. The homeowner is first and foremost always able to appeal their assessment without help of anybody. Okay, I think um, that says. Um, <coughs> Does it for you in terms of any more questions we have? It's, um, I thank you for taking steps and some of those that maybe weren't here, but there are curious people here. So, anyway, uh, George, thanks a lot. Um, Douglas, if there's time at the end, um, I'll let you say something. But we need to go on now to the Highway Commissioner Office. Um, the Highway Commissioner oversees and is responsible for the construction, maintenance, and repair of roads within the unincorporated areas of the district, letting contracts, employing labor, and purchasing material and machinery subject to certain limitations. So there are three positions for there are three candidates for that one position. Two of them are here tonight. So we'll first hear from Mr. Robert D. Pula. Um, Mr. Pula, your opening statement, please, sir. Thank you. Well, I go by Bob. So my name is Bob Kula. I live in Great Lake. I've been there for 12 years now. I married my wife, Laura, 20 years next week. And we have four kids. Uh, I've been employed at Avon Township since 1984. So the reason 
uh, nine for highway commissioner. You uh, some people in the back can't hear. So I'm sorry. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. So the reason I'm running for highway commissioner is because I, I love what I do. I've been there. You know, if you stick around at a job for 29 years, it's because you have a passion for it. And I have a passion for helping people. I've had, you know, the opportunity to work with many people over the last 29 years and uh, uh, there's a lot more I, I like to do uh, as highway commissioner I can do that. Uh, I am certified through uh, stormwater management as a dedicated uh, a road patrol inspector. Uh, so I do have the background for the job and uh, my main goal is, is to increase uh, cooperation with other villages. We do that now, actually, we've been doing that. Uh, I've been doing that for the last, uh, for as long as I can remember, and I just want to continue that uh, cooperation with the other villages. So thank you. Okay, thanks, Bob. And now, uh, Mr. James P. Dinomi. Uh, Mr. Dinomi, if you can hear your opening statement, please, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just to give you a uh, snapshot of the qualifications, I've been uh, living here in Haynesville for 12 years, so I've been in Avon Township for 12 years. I'm a member of the Haynesville Woodlands Open Space and Wetlands Committee, uh, the Haynesville Sponsored Golden Age Club, and uh, I'm a past member of the United States uh, Steel Workers of America and the Brotherhood of Railroad Training. Uh, I've been a driver for Barry Trucking in Milwaukee, and I uh, served as past uh, Civil Service Commissioner and also for the Board of Zoning Appeals and Deputy Director of the Office of Telecommunications for the City of Milwaukee. So I've had some uh, commissioner experience in the, back, in the past. Uh, also, um, I did work on a contract with the Colorado Department of Transportation in CEDA, uh, in the past in the job that I had uh, at Boulder, Colorado. I currently serve as the President of the Mitchell Museum of the American Indian, the International Institute of Wisconsin, and both organizations completed our last fiscal year in the black, I'm real happy to tell you. I bring a real valuable budgeting and grants experience to uh, for-profit, not-for-profit, and government levels to the Avon table. Uh, I would like to for, uh, be a force for stabilization in the highway department and township government. In the last 48 months, I've seen change in virtually every position in the Avon township government. Uh, number two, uh, I'd like to be a force for financial stabilization. The administration should consider accrual or cash basis of accounting and not the financial hybrid it now places uh, now in place is the most recent audit report states. Uh, we need to communicate, that seems to be the big word tonight, to all 65,000 Avon residents, and uh, to avoid things like abandoning seniors on one face password because the information wasn't correct. Um, to date, I've met with Lake County Strategic Planning Reps, IDOT, Lake County Storm Water Management Commission Rep, emergency <coughs> management uh, folks, and uh, I have a family tradition. My great grandfather was the very first highway commissioner of Barabin County, Michigan. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Okay, some questions, gentlemen. Um, this is a question we don't often get, but I'm sure everybody deep down wants to know the answer to it, and maybe you can tell us in less than a minute. But why do you want this job? Who in the right mind would want this job? That's is what the application is. So. Uh, yeah, you start that. Uh, why do I want the job? Uh, as I stated in my opening statement, because I, I love what I do, I love getting up in the middle of the night and snow on roads. <laughs> taking roads up. I do. You do it for 29 years. You don't do it because it's a job. You do it because you really enjoy it. it it's, it's helping people. It, it's helping people is, is why I want to stay at the highway department as a commissioner because I, I truly enjoy helping people. That's number one. Thanks, Bob. Jim? I think I earlier stated some of the reasons, but I think, uh, uh, well, like this man right here, I'd like to help people. I don't mind getting up in strange hours, and I like the weather, and I like to get out. In fact, uh, Barb sometimes looks at me with little back eyes when I tell her I used to camp in the winter. So, um, but also, I don't want to necessarily um, uh, make you nervous. But, uh, there are some things I like to mix uh, new technology with old traditional ways, and so the plowing is great. Uh, but I think that uh, there are some instances when, uh, like airplane pilots, you have to get into a simulator and learn how to do panel situations and things like that. There's no such a thing for snowplow drivers. Uh, so that we have the best guys on the road doing the best job in these unincorporated townships, but really 
really need some help because many of those uh, roadways uh, affect some of my, uh, in our ethnically diverse neighborhood, uh, come from different countries and they talk sometimes about our third world roads. They're tough, they're not always the best shape. And so we need to be able to take care of them in a good, professional, competent way. Okay, thanks, Jim. Jim, now, if you don't mind, if you could answer this one. And it's an informative question. How many employees in the highway department and what kind of uniforms have you purchased with a budget line item of $5,000? Well, I, I haven't purchased any. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I looked at, the, when I examined the budget, I looked at the budget of $5,000 uh, for the, and I thought, well, is this uh, Gucci or is this um, uh, Mills uh, Fleet Farm? You know, what's the deal here for uh, basically uh, uh, three or four people? But um, I, I also noticed that uh, uh, less than half of that was actually used for that, for that program. Okay, and Bob, how about you? Uh, again, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not in charge of purchasing, but um, that's actually been in the back of my mind. And, and what I would do as a commissioner is I will comment, a lot of the utility companies do, they give you a budget, a personal budget, and they'll say $200 a year, and you go out and buy your pants and some shirts, and, and you're set for the year, and then you're responsible for taking care of your uniform, and, and that's the end of it. Uh, just just on a personal basis, I know working there that, you know, that's very doable, and uh, probably something I look at doing. Okay, Bob, it's up for this one. Due to the fact that there are only twelve months of roads for Avon Township to maintain. A highway commissioner plays a major role as part of the workforce as well as an administrator. What certification or skills do you possess that will enable you to do this job effectively? Uh, as I stated before, I, I do have that designated road control and inspection, uh, inspector uh, certification through SMC. Uh, and then again, my 29 years of experience, I think uh, speaks for itself. Um, and when you, when you talk about, you know, that we only have 12 point, actually, we have 12.49 miles. <laughs> Not lane miles, that's actual miles. You know, when you speak, a lot of times people speak of lane miles, but that's, you know, in regards to the snowfall. So, uh, you know, we have 24 point, or 25.8 miles of lane miles to plow. But we don't just do that. You know, when I talk about partnerships with the villages, we take care of third lane. You know, Third Lake does not have a highway department, uh, so we plow their we plow their roads. We do uh, roads for Grace Lake, and we you know, can we save the villages money because we do it a lot cheaper than contract. So. Thanks, Bob. Jim, please. Uh, well, I'm not having had the position. I guess I do need some certification, but I am uh, certified by the state of Illinois as a trainer of trainers through IIT. Uh, currently, looking right now at the manual for the uh, CDL. Uh, examination <coughs> of, uh, commercial driver's license and uh, also examining uh, potential uh, schools to go to right now, uh, one down and one down. But, so I do have that kind of certification. I do have a degree in mass communications, uh, so the communication part would be real key, I think, that we've all been talking about this evening. And um, so that's, that's the, vast basis of, the basis of the certifications that I do have. Okay, thanks, Jim. And if you would mind the next question. Um, I'm surmising it has to do with um, um, a concern that public safety be the number one priority for the highway commissioner um, and that it has something to do with um, road signage, good shoulders, good drainage, pothole-free roads, and most of all, quick and safe um, response before and during snowstorms. Would you like to comment on, on this? Um, take of, of um, highway commissioners, number one top priority? Well, safety is the main concern, and, and uh, to keep the uh, wheels of commerce rolling all at the same time, it's kind of juggling eight balls in the air at one time. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a demanding position that requires you not only to keep your eyes on the road, but to keep your eyes on the horizon and make sure that everything that you're responsible for is kept in good order, in good shape for the people, and uh, you also have to keep one eye on the weather. You can't just be on the horizon and on the road. So I think it, it's really crucial that uh, you always have your antennas up and uh, being cautious and being, uh, like I don't want to keep driving through those big pools of water I saw on 120, uh, 134 this past week. Uh, there should have been something done in that ditch in that uh, culvert area, things like that. You just have to be, have to have your, uh, your spider senses going all the time. Thanks, Jim. Now, please. 
Can you repeat that for me? It's like, no. sure. It really it has to do with whether or not you would agree that a number one priority for a highway commissioner should be um, public safety, and, and they quote, um, or <coughs> refer to road signage, good shoulders, good drainage, bottle free roads, and a quick and safe response before incurring snow storms. Would you agree with that? Oh, well, sure. You know, we've always, the one thing the highway department's always, the township highway department's always pride itself on was. A great response for uh, snow removal. Uh, all the guys at the highway, even not, not the highway commissioner, but myself and Tony, the other guy that works there, we are on the radar constantly in the wintertime. I mean, to the fact that at home my wife was yelling at me, you know, turn off the weather channel. So, but safety is always a top priority, but uh, if I just get off the subject a little bit, public, public safety is always number one, but I wanna, what I want to incorporate into that is. Uh, lake health and how our, uh, you know, I refer to public safety, I mean like our de-icing uh, materials. And we need to incorporate lake health into that, in that uh, uh, public safety so we're being responsible to provide public safety, but in the same, in the same token we you know, incorporate lake health into that equation. Okay, thanks Bob. And next question Bob. How can salt usage be reduced properly and safely? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, we have we have five trucks in the township right now. Although you know, in a, in a, if it's just a, like a, a de-icing uh, situation where we're just going to go out and salt, we'll take out maybe three trucks, sometimes four. We have one truck that has a computer on it right now. That computer can monitor uh, how much salt is going down per lane mile. And what I'd like to do over the next few years is start phasing in all the trucks that have that onboard computer. And by doing that. You know, there's going to be an initial investment, but by doing that, we'll be able to, I, I think we can reduce the salt by probably 25%. And based on how much salt we use right now, that's about, translates to about $18,000 a year that we can save in a typical snow season. So that's that's one of the ways that uh, I'll be looking to do that. Thank you. Okay, Bob, thanks. Jim, please. Uh, I think that um, in the time that I lived in Colorado and worked with uh, CETA there, uh, they never use salt, and uh, they use a combination of uh, beet juice, slurry, and the highways out there that's more environmentally friendly. It's a, it's a lot more expensive, but it doesn't uh, really damage the, the, the environment. There are other ways to uh, look at it. This sounds a little strange, but you couldn't use ground glass as a potential uh, thing to surface on the highway. But there are a lot of different ways that you, uh, a lot of options that are out there. They're not all cheap, but again, salt is not cheap, but the price is coming back down. It used to be about 40 bucks a ton, about 100 bucks a ton. And I think it's probably back down to about 60 bucks a ton now. Yeah. So uh, that's fluctuating all over. But there are other options to look at and uh, things that perhaps could be even more environmentally friendly for uh, our township. Okay, Jim. And if you would mind the next question. Are any of these stormwater certified? And if so, how does this benefit the township? Uh, I am not stormwater certified. However, I did meet with the folks. Uh, I went up to the um, uh, Lake County uh, Strategic Planning uh, <coughs> Session and did uh, kind of team up with the different agencies that I felt that we might be possible or we would overlap with, and we did talk about this. So I do have the information. Uh, I would pursue it, and it uh, would be something I'd put into the Plan B file. Thanks, Jim. Bob, please. Um, as I stated before, I do have that erosion control inspection certification through SMC. Um, you know, I've taken uh, I've gone to many seminars over at uh, SMC as well, but uh, that would be the extent of that right now. But um, so that's about it right now. Okay, thanks, Bob. And if you would mind the next question, sure. how important is it for the highway commissioner to know the current above and below infrastructure of the township? Uh, well, the, the, I am actually uh, I'm quite versed in the in the below and above ground infrastructure in the township because I built most of it below ground. Uh, above ground, what I like to see is we've kind of gotten away from uh, uh, a planned uh, paving, uh, you know, schedule. We, we used to have one uh, under Pat. Uh, we used to have, we were, every seven years, the roads would get paved, uh, you know, budget, you know, if the budget allowed it, but we were very good about uh, getting into a, a schedule of redoing the roads so the roads stayed maintained. And actually, you know, it sounds like it, it, it's expensive, but really, if you maintain those roads and repay them on a schedule, it actually costs less than keeping them up. Because if you let them go, 
it costs more to rebuild them than it does if you were taking care of them in the first place. Okay. Jen? Uh, the, the infrastructure is crucial. It should be uh, maintained on a regular basis, and uh, you know, we should be on a rotating schedule of how these things are maintained and kept up. And I also uh, just want to talk about what's underneath the roads. Uh, around this part of the country, you've got a lot of that Illinois clay that's got the 60 year shovel on the train, which is a lot of that dug up. And uh, it's a lot different than, let's say, in Colorado, where it was, it was a lot of dirt and sand. And so, how you treat the infrastructure is a lot different depending on where you are. There are different spots within the township that we would be serving that we have to have a, maybe even a better look down below to see what's down there just to make sure that we're doing it properly. Thanks, Bob.